So if you don't mind, ladies and gentlemen, can we start uh, on this one? Uh, So we are now 91, so I think the number is growing up. So I think now we are at a point we can start, ladies and gentlemen. So yes, thank you very much, Humphrey. So Humphrey, thank you very much. So I think we can start with the blessing of Mr. Humphrey. I think we can start. So good morning, Mr. Humphrey, and all of you, good morning. Uh, so thank you very much, Mr. Humphrey. So I think we should start. So. All of you, good morning. So let us start. So uh, thank you very much, Miss uh, Madam Oluwatch, and all of you. So let me say all of you. So let's start. So this is um, another unit, which is known as the Engineering Management Two. Uh, let me put on the recording. Uh, welcome. This is another unit which I'm with you. It is entitled Engineering Management uh, 2 ECE 2509. So I think I've had this one for since 19, uh, no, since 2011. I've been taking this particular uh, 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 particular unit. Uh, at J Court, uh, I think now several years. So uh, I think let us uh, proceed, and I think I've developed quite a lot of uh, experience in uh, in this engineering management to ECE twenty five zero nine. So let me just give you the outline, and then we can give the introductory aspect of it, ladies and gentlemen. So this is our outline or the course description. So we shall look at your role in society, and I think that's the topic I'll take today. What is the role of Humphrey in the society? What's the role of uh, Lorna in society? What's the role of uh, Kibuga in society? So we shall actually have a look at uh, this today. So what is your role as an engineer in a society? So uh, I think from my talk today, you realize that uh, you are a very important person, ladies and gentlemen. Without you, this world will not exist, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you the truth. Without you, uh, the world cannot be there. Without you, there will not be any efficiency in this world. So uh, we shall look at this one more. But I, I mentioned to you that uh, you are so important in the sector. And maybe when I take this uh, 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 topic, you realize you are important. And you actually, at the end of this uh, 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 topic, I'm sure you will leave here a very proud man or lady for uh, the setting. Then we shall look at the professional ethics and the professional bodies. This is quite important for I Minimizing becomes very easy. Some people who do do distribute pens, then they say have this one. That's also one way of compromising somebody. So we have to be very, very careful so that we are not compromised. I think this is why we look at these uh, professional ethics and uh, uh, like that, so that uh, you become steady, you become firm, so that. Uh, you are not compromised. You know, when you are compromised, then you will tarnish your name, and that might be the end of your consultant, ladies and gentlemen. So, and then the engineer's uh, office and uh, project management, so you realize that uh, if you are consulting the engineer, you have an office, and then you also manage the project. Then you shall look at it. What's the role of engineer uh, engineer's office in the project management? How is the engineering project uh, being managed? So we shall look into this one more into the detail, ladies and gentlemen. That means that uh, 
what is your role in project development or project uh, management? So we shall have a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We shall also look at the responsibilities of engineer as a lead consultant from inception of a project to handing over. You, I think you have been seeing the projects being done uh, from the inception. That means that you have a dream, let's say that uh, Lona has a dream in one particular case, or let's say that uh, uh, Lona's mother has a dream, and Lona being engineer, then the mother will actually uh, tell Lona the dream, and then Lona can develop that dream to be a project, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what happens at the end of this session, ladies and gentlemen, I will invite you to a small song so that you can actually celebrate with a small song. If you cannot sing it, then we shall recite it, ladies and gentlemen. Because now you start from a dream, and then from the dream, you build up the thing. So this is actually what happens in the normal circumstances. Uh, we always say that you have a dream, and then from the dream, then you develop what is required. So, uh, and I think then I'll summarize that dream more or less in a song at the end of uh, this one. So uh, I would just like to say that uh, uh, if I'm an engineer, that I take the vision which comes from dreams. That means that you are dreaming. You think of future as dreaming. The engineer takes the dream and develop that dream to be a project. So. I think that's what you shall be thinking about. So the responsibilities of the engineer as a lead consultant from the inception of a project to a handing over. Inceptions means that from the dream, when the client dreams of something, then you develop it to be something. And then you proceed through the process and think the thing is done and you hand over to the client. So that's actually the role we shall do there. Responsibilities of the engineer as the lead consultant from the inception of a project to the handing over. So I think we shall look at that one into detail, ladies and gentlemen. Then we shall look at the bidding uh, procedures. I think in this particular case then, since I'm also taking you in uh, uh, civil engineering uh, 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 practice, there is a small uh, 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 there's a small uh, 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 overlap in this one, but uh, we shall look at the bidding procedures because now, once you have developed the project, then you need to procure it. So we can look at this one, procurement procedures. How do we procure uh, 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 a contractor so that can actually make uh, our project to do so? So we shall look at the various procedures which can be followed. You realize that in case of emergency, you might not follow the whole of this process. So this is another way you can follow so that you can actually just uh, have uh, a contract on site. You can even have a contract on site even before you develop the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the various uh, plans in case it is a very urgent one. So then you can actually develop and the contractor is there. So if this is a very urgent aspect, but we shall look at that one later on. And then now, assume that you have, uh, uh, the other time I named uh, one student reporters, I made him to have uh, a construction firm. So you can assume that you have got Chomba construction firm, although the name Chomba do not go very well with a construction firm. But anyway, let's say that you have got a Chomba construction company in this particular case, then how do you organize your company in this particular case, especially in the construction so that you can succeed? So in this case then, uh, so this is really what we shall do in this case then, when you're looking at the organization of the construction industry, you wanna, uh, you have one attender. How do you organize yourself so that you can actually take up the job? And maybe you have got some specialized uh, task which you are not able to do. How do you incorporate it in your particular aspect? So we shall look at the organization of the construction industry, ladies and gentlemen, in this particular case. And then uh, from there, then we shall actually look at the contract basics. So uh, that means that we shall have to understand some uh, laws governing the contract and everything to deal with the contract in this case. 
And then I mentioned to, no, I don't know whether it's this class or the other class. I think I mentioned the other day that uh, instead of doing everything from the scratch, ladies and gentlemen, here we have standard forms. That means that uh, uh, when you are informing somebody, a, 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 a bidder, that you want to do this one, you just fill a form. When somebody has uh, been uh, uh, been awarded that one, you inform me about having a form. That means that in the construction industry, uh, there are standard forms. In this case, then you just fill them, and then you give it. Uh, so we shall also have a look at uh, how many of these uh, standard forms do we have of contracts, so that uh, you don't have to invent the wheel, ladies and gentlemen. So. I think last semester I was uh, telling some of my students, not you, in another in another university, that uh, uh, in this particular case, then you need not to start from the scratch. You can build up from what you have. So in this case, then standard forms of contract are so critical, ladies and gentlemen. We shall have a look at that one, and then uh, we shall also look at the uh, the time and work study, because now if you are going to bid. You really know, you want to know how much time will it take you to do so. That means that we shall have to develop standard time so that you can use it when you are actually estimating uh, uh, your contract period. So standard time means that uh, the time when somebody can work uh, in a given day, you take consideration that uh, man is not manual, Mr. Nyango is not manual, weekly is not manual, weekly need to rest. So, you have to give some allowances for a week leave, maybe to go for a cigarette, maybe to take a drinking water, maybe to go for lunch in this particular case. There are some allowance which you give so, but are apparently, I think we should stop this one. Ladies are given more allowance than the, the men, ladies and gentlemen. Why is that so? Uh, if a lady uh, goes, uh, uh, he looks at herself in the mirror, for a longer period, Mr. Nyango will not look uh, uh, himself into the mirror, but I'm sure Lona would like to see how is the air, how whatever have you. So ladies are given more allowance than men, how we understand uh, uh, what I mean in this particular case, because they like to look at themselves better than ourselves. Ourselves, we don't need so much, so they are given more allowance than required. When you're dealing with the work study and time study, we shall look into that, ladies and gentlemen. And then lastly, we shall look at the engineer's training. So these are the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the course uh, description as contained in your curriculum. Let me just read them once uh, without an explanation. The role of the engineer in society, professional ethics and professional bodies, office and project management, uh, responsibilities of the engineer as a lead consultant from inception of a project to handing over, bidding procedures, organization of the construction industry, uh, contract basics, standard forms of contract, introduction to time study and work study, the engineer's training. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, maybe we shall navigate through and uh, uh, see how much you can cover uh, that's the course outline they look uh, few but uh, they contain uh, more ladies and gentlemen let me now bring in uh, one particular slide so that you can do the introduction today you know in the first day you don't go for a longer period so uh, i'll take it on a shorter basis but let, let's have a look at our first uh, topic, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, upload it, ladies and gentlemen. Just give me time to upload it. So. So I'll only do this topic today because uh, being our first day, I would not like to go overboard. So I'll just discuss today the role of engineering in society. So this is our topic for today. And it happens is the first topic in our 
uh, 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 in our course outline. So let's have a look at it. That means then, uh, what is your role in a society? Actually, I would just like to say before I start is that uh, your role is to work for the people. Without people, then you have no role, Mr. Nyango. Your duty is to work for the people. That means that uh, you, you satisfy the societal need. That's actually your role. So can we look at uh, this particular bit, the role of engineering in society or the role of engineer in a society? So let's look at this one. And actually, I would just like to say from the onset that without people, then you have no job in this case. So the engineer uh, uh, satisfy the societal need. That means that you work for the society. Without the society, then you are no longer, uh, then you have no role to do anything here. So this is why we are discussing the role in the society, because that's a very important uh, aspect ladies and gentlemen the role without the society then there's no engineering i think these two uh, uh, these two words are so critical your role and the society that means that you serve the societal needs without the society you are not there ladies and gentlemen so you only exist when people are there when people are not there you have no role and you have no job, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at this particular aspect, the role of engineering in society, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at this particular bit. So let's have some introduction and we just uh, proceed over. Let me just say a few things, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, in practice of engineering, uh, engineering does not exist outside the domain of societal needs. That means that uh, you exist because you serve the society you serve the societal interest. If you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, your role is to serve the society. You design a road, who is going to use that road? The society. You actually design a building, who is going to use that road? The society. You actually uh, 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 design a, uh, 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 a train, who is going to use that train? The society. You design uh, an aeroplane, and you put it and build it up, who is going to use this one? The society. And I think this is why it is said that uh, engineering satisfies the societal needs. That means that uh, you work for the society. And I think you have done a lot of uh, improvement into this particular aspect. I think uh, you have now made things easier. Let me just take uh, one particular thing of uh, uh, our WhatsApp. So these things came as a result of the engineering work. So it has made the work easier for us. When I was young, we used to ring uh, a telephone. You dial it like that. But then now, the engineers have now improved on it. Just now, I press at the button, then you proceed. So you see then, we are working for the society. I think there are so many examples which we can give. Uh, that means our role is for the society. When I'm talking now, I'm not just talking on the civil engineering alone, but I'm talking engineering as a, 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 as a profession in this particular bit in totality. That means that uh, uh, in practice, engineering does not exist outside the, the domain of the societal interest. I think I've mentioned to you what is the societal uh, interest. Look at the, uh, the highway from the from Nairobi to Zika. I think now it's just extended. Now because you improved on it, you made it a dual uh, carriageway. Now the vehicle move faster. That's the role of the engineer to the society. The engineer uh, 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 builds up a dam, designs and build up the dam. Then water now become available to the society. That means then you are actually working for the society. That's a societal need. So I hope now you're understanding what I mean by societal interest. Without the society, there's no engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So the practice of engineering does not exist outside the domain of societal uh, uh, interest. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the practice of engineering uh, 
has an inherent or an avoidable impact on the society. I think you are impacting on the society more positive than negative. I'm talking of there are also some negative aspects that uh, you can take locals which run very fast and then they also involve in an accident, then you, you get one bit uh, like that. So I can give my example. Uh, one time I collected, uh, uh, I ordered a, a car from Japan. So I went to the port to collect it after I've collected it. So then uh, the car was made such that uh, I could not feel the resistance of the wind. So I didn't know. I realized that I was going 160, 165 without me knowing, only when I look at the speedometer. Then from there, I was now driving, looking at the speedometer. Because the one which I had a long time ago, if you go over 100, you feel that you are going very much because of the wind resistance. But the one of these days, then they could pierce through the wind. You might not even notice you are going that one. These are the improvement of the engineering in the society. I've just given you one particular example of, uh, of those ones. So, so uh, that, that is the practice of engineering as an inherent and unavoidable impact on society. Uh, engineering is based upon the relationship with the society. That means that uh, the engineer must study the need for the society is when you develop something. In a few minutes, I'll actually mention to you how you get this particular bit. That means that uh, you work with a society. There's no way you can actually do something. And then uh, in the end, when you come to contract management or the engineer role in that one, uh, the ethics is that uh, you should actually not experiment anything uh, with, a, with a client. If you want to do so, then you must get uh, uh, permission from the client because uh, it costs money. So there's no experimenting in terms of this one. You are serving the society. So engineering is based on the relationship with the society. The primary role of science is to develop knowledge and understanding of the physical universe. I think we know what science is, ladies and gentlemen. And we can talk so much of the science. And actually, the scientists, they work on what exists, ladies and gentlemen. If there's COVID, they work on the existence of their COVID. They actually try to see what's the problem. But an engineer like Mr. Mutua, he can develop something which never existed. He just imagine and think about it, then he can develop what exists. That means that an engineer can develop something which never existed. But a scientist works on something which is existing. So I think we shall look at this one uh, more into, into as we proceed. That means that the primary role of science is to develop knowledge, understanding of physical universe, ladies and gentlemen. But the engineer is a little bit uh, different in terms of this. That means then engineering is creative application of scientific knowledge so that you can analyze because before you do something, you must analyze. Then from there, you can design, you can construct, you can operate and maintain uh, uh, the services or the start to need. That means that uh, uh, engineering in a very simple form is a created application of scientific knowledge to analyze, design, construct, operate, and uh, the products and services. Do not relate this one with Venn diagram. In a few minutes, then I'll get to the Venn diagram, and then we can actually look at it more into one way or the other, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, just as I mentioned to you that uh, the central focus of engineering profession is the application of scientific knowledge uh, 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 to meet the societal need. That means that you work for the society, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, and then on the other bit, uh, there are several uh, versions which are put across when trying to define engineering. Uh, engineering is a discipline concerned full, full cognizance of the environment, sustainable development, for most the safety, health, and welfare to the human life. So 
that's one part of the engineering. So I think when we shall come to the ethics, ladies and gentlemen, ethics, the first uh, bit of the ethics deals with uh, safety, health, and the welfare of the human life. So that means that uh, the engineer actually uh, 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 is concerned with the full recognizance of the environment, uh, sustainable development, and for most, the safety, health, and welfare to the human life. We shall actually uh, uh, navigate under this clause when it comes to ethics, which should be actually uh, a subject of next week, ladies and gentlemen, God willing. So. Engineering is also the profession that provides the technical solution necessary for contributing to a better and a more effect, a more efficient world by solving a myriad of pressing problems affecting the happiness and well-being of the society. I think engineers make us to be happy in one way or the other. I saw Madame Evie get under uh, trying to raise the hand, so I don't know why, maybe by mistake. So, so that means uh, engineering is a profession that provides technical solutions necessary for contributing to a better and a more efficient world by solving a myriad pressing problems affecting the happiness and well-being of the society. So uh, I think we can actually talk of so many things uh, in this case then uh, which the engineer does in one way or the other, but I shall come to that one later on. So I mentioned to you that uh, I would like to bring in the word engineering in several ways so that it sticks in our, in our knowledge, although that's what you are doing. So that means that engineering is the profession in which knowledge of the mathematical natural sciences gained by study, experience, and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economic the materials and uh, focuses uh, and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. So, ladies and gentlemen, we shall see later on. In the definition of engineering, it talks about societal needs. Like this is a definition of engineering. It is talking about societal needs. The last phrase there, for the benefit of mankind. Mankind is a societal need, so it, it's a society. That means that anything you do is for the mankind. That means that for the society. So that means the profession in which the knowledge of mathematical and uh, natural sciences gained by study, experience, and practice is applied with the judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. And it of engineering must include the, something to do with the society, like in this case, the mankind, that's the society, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I think I'm soon, uh, uh, I'm soon uh, finalizing on my definition of engineering, but I think this was another one which was developed by the Institution of Professional Engineers in New Zealand in 1993. This is how it uh, defined uh, this one. Engineers will translate into action the dreams of humanity. What is the dreams of humanity? That's a societal need. That means that uh, you, somebody dreams, gives you the idea, and then you develop. That means that engineers will translate into action dreams of humanity, tr uh, traditional knowledge, and concept of science to achieve sustainable management of, pl of the planet through creative application of technology. This one was a definition which was given by the Institution of Professional Engineers in New Zealand in 1993. Whichever definition you get, it must include a societal need. So this is what I was trying to put into your mind that uh, I've given there several definitions, and each definition has got, uh, has got a societal need, ladies and gentlemen. So I think actually what I wanted to to bring to you as we are trying to navigate the role of engineering uh, uh, in society, ladies and gentlemen. So now, let me now try now to uh, uh, bring another interrelationship of uh, engineering and the society. So let me use what's known as the 
the Venn diagram. So actually the Venn diagram is always used when you want to summarize something in a very short way. So I'll try and use it, ladies and gentlemen, to actually uh, proceed with my uh, 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 trying to relate to you the role of engineering to the society. So I'll use the Venn diagram. I've mentioned to you that the Venn diagram is always used to show the relationship of uh, if you have uh, one or two parameters in a summary form so that it becomes understood. So let me use uh, this, ladies and gentlemen. And by the time I finish this Venn diagram, then I'm sure you'll be understanding the role of engineer to the society. Actually, uh, the Venn diagram shows the relationship of engineering and societal needs. So also the scientific knowledge, analysis and credibility. But let's start from a, a very humble beginning as we build it up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start from a humble beginning. So that means that uh, 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 there should be a scientific uh, knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. From the scientific knowledge, then you can actually now develop the research, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in our way of developing the engineering, ladies and gentlemen. That means then uh, we are involving ourselves that uh, utilization of the of, of uh, scientific knowledge over time to establish the, some of the knowledge which can actually be relevant to us as we uh, tackle the societal uh, needs. So uh, let me just give you one phrase on that one, ladies and gentlemen. The utilization of scientific knowledge over time establishes that uh, some of the knowledge is immediately relevant to the societal need, while other parts are less uh, immediately relevant to the society. So this is what I'm trying to say. So like the one which I've given you, that means then we are just actually having the uh, scientific knowledge and then from scientific knowledge, which we have gained, we can do some uh, research as we are on our way to understanding the engineering. And then once we have the uh, scientific knowledge, then we can reflect this scientific knowledge to the societal needs. And if we can do so, then we have the engineering. So you can see now the role of engineering uh, 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 to the societal needs. That means that uh, once you develop the knowledge, of course, through the research and whatever view, then you look at the societal needs, then you can actually bring out something for them. And that's really what is referred to in this case as uh, engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So that means that uh, engineering starts from uh, very far, ladies and gentlemen. So that means then uh, the overlap of uh, uh, scientific knowledge with a societal need, in this case then, uh, or more specifically, the application of uh, creative knowledge to the needs of the society, that's the domain of the engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So this is actually what, what uh, happens here. That means that uh, you have the scientific knowledge and then you look at the needs for the society, then when you develop what is there, then that will actually is engineering. So this actually is a, uh, the Venn uh, diagram explanation of engineering. I've already given you the, the normal aspect. This is actually the start of it. That means that you must have the scientific knowledge and then you look at the, what the society needs. And if you develop something, that's actually the engineering, ladies and gentlemen. That means that uh, you cannot develop anything without looking at that one. That means that uh, you must actually look at critically what the human uh, society needs. And you realize that uh, society is also very complex, so that you must need uh, uh, to do a little bit of more research, ladies and gentlemen. Clearly, the extent of human enterprise is more complex than uh, we are presenting in that particular sketch. For example, it is the interest uh, of the society to increase our store of scientific knowledge. Then engineers and scientists who apply their trade in the, in the frontiers of scientific research are both serving the societal needs. So that means that uh, this is why we are actually serving our societal needs. That means that uh, we need the knowledge 
and then you look at what that societal needs, then uh, whatever we develop is engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So we are in the process of developing. But I mentioned to you at the beginning that engineering is not only that one, it also includes the creator, uh, uh, it also includes the analysis and the creatability. I think I mentioned that one to you earlier. So, so we are going actually uh, to build up uh, that one in our talk here. So let me proceed uh, further with our discussion, ladies and gentlemen. So then now, we can also, once you become a creative, engineer must be, engineer must be creative. I hope Mr. Mutua, you are creative. If you are not creative, then there's no need of being an engineer. And then you have to do analysis of the data. So this is one uh, important aspect that uh, once we have had the, uh, the, 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 the societal needs, and then we have had the scientific knowledge, and then we have to do analysis to find out uh, what are we doing. And in that analysis, then you can actually be creative in one way or the other. So they tell you what is uh, in this particular bit. That means that uh, uh, the analogy can be extended by uh, uh, superimposing the distinction of the creative versus the analytical aspect of the human enterprise. We can represent this aspect of the human uh, into by another Venn diagram, which I'm uh, showing to you. And it uh, shows clearly uh, one uh, pursue the creative efforts without involving an analytical skills. And one may apply analytical skills without uh, entering the domain of capability. For example, as engineers apply commercial software to the solution of the engineering problem, the application of an analytical skills uh, per se may involve little or no creativity ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, for an engineer, you must be creative without creativity. Look at what the engineers have done. That means shows that you need to. But then analysis must be done because an engineer cannot do without mathematical aspects. I think at the beginning of my, of my talk, I mentioned to you, I brought you some uh, definition talking on mathematical aspects. So that's actually why you need uh, some data in this particular aspect. So let me see if I can uh, get it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If I don't get it, then we just proceed. So we are saying that, uh, or, or even this one, ladies and gentlemen, even this one can do. The creative application of scientific knowledge to analyze, design, construct, operate, uh, products and services of the societal needs. So uh, there is a one which I needed where I was talking about the mathematical aspect. So let me see if I can get it. Yeah, here it is. Engineering is a profession in which knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences gained by the study, experience, and practice is applied with the judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials and the forces of nature for the benefit of mankind, ladies and gentlemen. That means then, uh, uh, and then this, this also, before I get to that one, this also is, uh, is interesting. Engineers will translate into action the dreams of humanity, uh, traditional knowledge and concept of science to achieve sustainable management of the planet through creative application of technology. That means that we must be creative and always when you see what engineers have done, it shows a lot of uh, creativity, ladies and gentlemen. I think you agree with that, that. But then analysis must be done so that uh, the engineer must always do analysis. And then uh, you have to be creative so that you can develop something, ladies and gentlemen. And I think engineers are doing quite well. It's our work to be easier. So then, uh, the main representation in the state that engineers need uh, to acquire analytical skills, but that in order to be productive, engineers need creativity. This is actually why I was uh, telling Mr. Mutua that it must be creative for you to be an engineer. If you are not creative, then you are not one. Then you better go uh, and deal with uh, 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 
maintenance and operations where you deal with what somebody has already done. So life seldom offers problems with single solution. Engineers often face complex and interactive dilemmas that require both analytical and creative skills. That means that uh, uh, you need creative skills. And I think I've given you now uh, 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 almost uh, three aspects. One is analysis, one is creativity. I've also given you the societal need, and I've also given you the scientific knowledge. So I think now for a, to be a complete engineer, we need to combine all these ones together, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is actually what uh, we are today. That means that uh, these things in, uh, overlap. Uh, for us to have the engineering, we, uh, we have to get the analysis and scientific knowledge. And then we have to be creative. And then whatever we do must be for the society. So in here, then you have the engineering, ladies and gentlemen. So this is where the engineering now comes in, ladies and gentlemen. That means that uh, 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 some could actually have it in various portions, but mine I put it into four. So we can have four sections of this one. That means that we can have the first one here is analysis and uh, scientific knowledge. That be here that you must be creative, and then now you have the societal need there. Then overlap of this one gives you the engineering. So this is only where the yeah. That means I was just trying to illustrate to you that uh, what is our role in the society, ladies and gentlemen. And I've done it in several ways. Uh, this bit is now I'm using the Venn diagram to explain on that. So like if you take the section A here of this and part A here, this represents interaction of purely analytical talents with the engineering domain. So that's actually the, uh, the section A there. So this may be used to represent engineering science, an ability to model complex systems and predict their response to various inputs under various conditions. This segment of engineering has, of course, been the subject of intense development over the last half a century and has benefited most directly from the availability of uh, fast digital computers. So, so that's actually for that one. And then now we have the uh, the part C, which is here. But I have a summary also on the other side, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, I've already noticed for this one, so there's no problem. So, and by, by instinct, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what happened. Maybe one of my students, had, I think, uh, the notes which I gave them in nine, in uh, in uh, 2013, uh, uh, somebody had put it into the uh, into the into the into one of these uh, bodies. So if I, I open the internet, I always see it. So I think one of my students put it there, but that was a very long time when I was having them. So I bumped on it there, then I was asking myself who had put this one. I couldn't. Uh, uh, find it out. So it is just written lecture, uh, lecture one, just the same way I'm uh, doing it. Although that one was more detailed than this one. So, so then uh, if you look at section A, section B, section C, section D, section A, I've already mentioned to you, this is purely analytical talent with engineering domain, the ability to, the ability to model complex systems and predict their response to various inputs under numerous conditions. That is for part A. And for part B, creative capacity within the engineering domain, this is viewed as those sudden intrusive leaps that can result in revolutionary advances in technology. And section C, the interaction of knowledge and the need for both creative and analytical capabilities. This, this is engineering design, the ability to work at real world problem solving. And then the last one, section D, the culmination of societal need, analysis, knowledge and creativity. This is the ideal role of engineering, uh, an individual engineer. So I'll pass over the notes uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen, so then uh, you can have a look at it. So I think I've now illustrated to you uh, the role of uh, uh, engineer in the society, 
I think I've got it to you from the basic. So I didn't want just to come and start quoting, this is the role. I think I've taken you from the basic, what's the role of the uh, 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 engineer, uh, engineer to the society. I think we have taken it from very far, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, from definition, and then from the Venn, uh, uh, the Venn diagram, which illustrates on those particular bits. So now, let us now go a little bit further, because uh, the curriculum was requiring us to, uh, to give the role of uh, engineering or the role of engineer in that one. So when I talk here, engineer and engineering, take them to be the same uh, things, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at this one, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you will not be surprised uh, some of the roles which I'll mention to you. So that means then, just as we have mentioned, uh, there's a little, you must do some research. So the engineer searches for new knowledge and the practical application for the new knowledge. So that's the role of engineering. The other one, development. That means it uh, produces a working model based on newly uh, discovered idea or working concept. So that's the role of uh, engineering. So ladies and gentlemen. And the other bit then, uh, engineers, they do a lot of it and they have a lot of creativity. That means that they solve the societal problems. I think when we started, uh, you see the role of the engineer is to solve the societal problems. I think you saw that uh, uh, engineer exists because of the society. That means it solves this. I'll give you some example, like the, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like these uh, 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 telephones now we are having. I think we started by dialing, and then now we are having uh, uh, this, uh, 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 I don't know how to call it, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name. This now complicated uh, uh, telephones, which you can even now get the news wherever you are we don't need to go back to your house you can do uh, everything and also you can even lecture the students uh, uh, having it on, on that one things have really changed i think uh, 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 last semester one day i lectured you just from my car when i was on a safari going to kisumu when it reaches your time i just uh, stood next to the road and then i was using my battery to power my uh, uh, to power to power my internet. So then I lectured you. Then from there, then I proceeded. So this is actually the uh, the new uh, technology which has come in. So that means then uh, building the necessary infrastructure, roads and bridges. You can see how complex they are, ladies and gentlemen. In this particular case, though sometimes you need problems, you don't have enough data. Like an example. Uh, one road was built and a bridge was built next to, uh, 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 is it next to Muoroni? I think the person who was taking the data did not have uh, adequate data of the flood. So when the flood came, washed the, the bridge, so they had to redo it again. This is why we talk of data. You must actually build the data. You work on the data without the data then you cannot be much of use to the people. I think those who follow that road, the one time they saw the bridge was taken away just after the road has been built. Why was that? I think the data was not properly uh, done with, there was not supposed that. That means that uh, the engineers actually build the necessary infrastructure, roads and bridges. And actually sometimes you might wonder I think the other day I was looking over the, uh, uh, some uh, uh, some YouTube. I could see in China they built a road uh, across the sea, ladies and gentlemen. I got surprised, ladies and gentlemen. So and a very nice one, ladies and gentlemen. The other day when the he when the Queen uh, passed on, uh, then he was being transported from uh, from uh, where he died to. Uh, 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 to the uh, to the capital of the uh, of Scotland, then you could see the bridge which they went uh, through was a very interesting bridge. Very much that means that uh, mankind can now make very interesting things, ladies and gentlemen. And even here in Mombasa, 
I understand, although I have not seen it, there's a bridge which now crosses from the inland to the other side. So I think now the role of engineers now, they are solving societal needs, societal problems. So then you find that now crossing the ocean is not really a problem. Building the necessary infrastructure, roads, bridges, and whatever have you. So those are the roles of that one. Then contributing towards the industrialization of the country, electrical, industrial, you can actually name so many. I've just taken a few. And also connecting the world communication, which I've been talking of, uh, telephone and whatever of you. I think the world has really changed, ladies and gentlemen. Why? It's because of you. The engineers are the ones which have changed the world. So if you don't realize it, it is you who have changed the world. Yeah, you have it. So you look at the complexes which are there. That means the engineers build the structures, machines, systems, and devices. Engineers are important because virtually it involves some machines, some devices, some systems, or uh, all, the, all the other ladies and gentlemen. So even if you're in a hostel, the, engineer, the engineers actually produce what the doctors uh, uh, use, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, without you, this world will not be comfortable, ladies and gentlemen. So this is what I'm trying to, uh, to tell you the importance that means that uh, engineers build the structures, uh, uh, they, they, they fabricate the machines, the systems, devices, and these ones are being used by the people to solve the societal needs. That means that really the engineer is working for the society. And then on the other bit is that uh, uh, engineers create products and processes to improve food production, shelter, energy, communication transportation, health, protection against natural calamities, and to enhance convenience and beauty of our everyday lives. They make possible a spectacular human triumph once uh, uh, only dreamed of in myth of, uh, and, science of, and fi science fiction. So that means then uh, engineers are actually what makes us what we are. If you look at the beauty of Nairobi, uh, who are the people who are making it? the engineers. Without the engineers, then the beauty of Nairobi will not be there, ladies and gentlemen. So I think we play quite a very important role to the society. And all what we do is for the society. Now, let's now single. Uh, I've been talking more in uh, that particular bit. Now, let's single in terms of social responsibilities of engineers, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's look at it in terms of social responsibilities of engineers. These ones are many, ladies and gentlemen, but I've just picked a few for our discussion because we cannot be able to, uh, to finalize on this one. So I've just picked a few and we're referring it to us, uh, uh, that one. But then uh, before I take it, ladies and gentlemen, let me just say uh, one or two and then I come to this uh, social responsibility. So uh, now, uh, what is really the how do we say that uh, what does having social responsibilities mean ladies and gentlemen if you are going to have the social responsibilities what would be the meaning of uh, social responsibilities ladies and gentlemen i don't know whether i included this one here if not then i'll just talk of it uh, from outside so i think it is there so ladies and gentlemen so i think uh, we can use the slide rather than uh, the other bit so uh, what uh, what do you understand in this case by talking of social responsibility? So, because I've been talking of it, uh, societal uh, uh, societal need and the rest. So, we can also talk of these social responsibilities. That means then, social responsibility of engineering profession is commitment to place public safety and interest ahead of all consideration. I think our next topic next week we shall look at the. Uh, public safety, health, and everything, when we shall be looking at the ethics, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm only dealing with the social responsibility as an introduction. It means that engineers take into account and show due regard for the consequences of their conduct for, or for well-being of others, as well as the impact of their work on society. I'll give also one bit which I'll cover in some weeks to come. That means then, uh, if engineering is doing some job, ladies and gentlemen, 
then you might owe liability in tort to the public or to the owner or to the other thing. That means that, uh, like now in your university, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there might be some people who are uh, 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 disadvantaged. So maybe when the architect was designing the building, he did not take care of those ones. So then you find that uh, your steps are always just going direct. That means that uh, whoever designed that building, they owe uh, 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 liability in tort uh, uh, to the public because some of the people might not be able to climb it very, very much. So that means that, uh, but you shall look at some of these ones that uh, if you get one omission, then you have a problem. So it means that engineers take into account and show due regard and consequences to their conduct or well-being of others, as well as the impact of their work on society. We shall look at, the, at uh, 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 what the engineers owe in thought to the public to the to the client and other things when you come to the uh, uh, role of engineering of a consultant engineer in actually uh, in works ladies and gentlemen so that means that you take responsibility for others so the engineer makes a determined effort to discover all the relevant facts concerning the design development deployment and all possible outcomes that may affect the society positively and negatively I think I mentioned that if you do something but you don't uh, take care of the disadvantage, that, that means that uh, you have not actually done a very satisfactory job, ladies and gentlemen. But let me leave that thought. We shall discuss that one uh, uh, later on. So, so engineers, I think, must be uh, 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 very critical in terms of uh, uh, those ones. So that means that you must be able to uh, 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 discover all the relevant facts concerning the design, development, deployment, and all possible outcomes that may affect the society positively or negatively. So you have to look at that one, ladies and gentlemen. So then uh, after I've talked about those ones, ladies and gentlemen, let me come now towards the, the, the final aspect of my discussion today, when you're looking at examples of some of the responsibilities of engineering. I'll just mention a few. There are so many. Commitment of engineering profession and organization uh, to principles of societal or social responsibility to ensure both safety and well-being of the public, to ensure that funds and resources uh, of society related to technology are properly used. That means that uh, if you are having engineering uh, uh, practicing something and you are using the public funds, you must ensure that they are properly used, ladies and gentlemen. So these are some of the uh, social responsibilities of engineers that we must make sure that uh, they are done. I know there could be some engineers. Let me just make somebody as an example. Uh, let, let me just say Mr. Mutu as an example. Or let me just use engineer Mutu as an example. Now, engineer Mutu would like to get uh, more money from the client. So, so he makes his design, and his design is uh, unethical. That means that he has over design so that uh, he can get more fee. In that case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that means that uh, in that case, then you will have not used the, uh, the funds and resources in the PSB. So you must be, your design should be ethical. You design it uh, uh, which is needed. So you should not over design so that you get more fee so that the construction uh, cost be more, so then you get more, so that it should be like that. So to ensure that the funds and resources for the society re related to technology are properly utilized, ladies and gentlemen. So the other bit is that <clears throat> to commit engineering schools to educate uh, future engineers, so this actually, uh, it is put in such that the, the engineers should actually be, uh, 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 be actually coached to ensure that uh, they respond to the society. So to commit engineering school to educate future engineers on their, on their social responsibilities, to provide expert advice to non-experts. That means that uh, as an engineer, you should actually offer your, your, uh, your uh, expertise. You can always advise the, 
non experts so that uh, uh, they are become knowledgeable. So, commitment of risk assessment, expert to ethical risk safety assessment, you should actually be able to do that one for the society. Actively promote the ethical development and use of technology. Provide social activism uh, of engineers in the public interest to ensure that uh, the publics are well taken care of. These things are many. Commitment of engineers to design and develop sustainable technologies. So, uh, so it's expected that uh, whatever you design should be sustainable, ladies and gentlemen. Take part in democratic procedures for technology decision making and policy management. Explicit care and concern about the technology's impact on nature and environment. So these are just the social responsibilities of engineers. There are many. Abiding by the principle of sustainable development when thinking about engineering design. Abiding by the principle of, oh, I think that is a, a repeat, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for that. To ensure that uh, society funds and resources 